All right, man. Uh, for everyone out there, this this is Abu. I've been pronouncing it the wrong way the whole time, so I'm going to call him by his alias, which is Hollywood. He said he don't mind. <laughs> Tell everyone about your channel and where exactly you're from, man. All right, guys. So I'm from New Jersey, and basically I came onto YouTube about three or four years ago uh, at the advice of a friend of mine. Basically what I was doing at the time was I was working with incarcerated youth uh, in a juvenile detention center in Newark, New Jersey. Okay. So a lot okay. of what I took from there, you know, I decided to transition and try to apply on a grander scale and hopefully be able to help more people. And that's basically how it started. From there, I just started, uh, you know, taking questions from subscribers, uh, viewers suggest certain topics. And for the most part, I'm free to speak about whatever. So yeah. that's basically how it went. That's cool, man. And uh, the first video I seen on your channel actually was before I knew you even been to prison or anything. It, was, it came up on my uh, suggested videos. And it was something with the cops inside of your store or something like that. Do you remember that video? Yeah, yeah. That was over uh, <laughs> something real small, man. But it turned into something big just because it was a bad day for me. I didn't like the way they came at me. But it had to do with this fire inspection. Yeah. Sort of had to hey, look. That. Look, uh, I love watching videos like that where, where cops aren't talked to with the utmost bow down, you know, type stuff. You know, most people, when they get in front of a cop, they're like, Oh man, you know what I mean? And they have that kind of personality like, okay, you run everything, you know? It's not, it ain't like that though. It doesn't have to be like that. Uh, and that's what I liked about that video, man. You just, you were yourself even in front of the freaking law. And I like that. I appreciate that. Man. I'm not saying to go against the law or anything along those lines, but you know, you can still be yourself and question crap that's going on, uh, regardless of who they are, you know, with a badge or not. But, Anyway, yeah, so what you, Josh, what you sorry to interrupt. What you just said actually is a very important point that I try to apply to myself and advice to others as well. In that, you know, question everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't just go with the flow of things. If something doesn't make sense to you, you know, you need to figure out why. And yeah. I even, you know, apply that to my young children in school. You know, yeah. I tell them that, you know, don't be afraid to rock the boat a little bit and ask whatever it is. And that's basically what that was that day. I wasn't happy with the explanations they were giving me and it just escalated from there. But yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. You said that. that that's correct. good. That's good advice, man. You know, uh, sometimes you got to break the mode. You, you can't just go yeah. with the flow all the damn time or else you're going to, you're not going to amount to too much. You know what I mean? I mean, of course you might, but, uh, you could be following the wrong path cause you just didn't want to dip into that. The truth side of things, you know what I mean? Definitely. But, uh, so you've been locked up. Oh, wait, hold on. You're in Jersey, man? Yeah. Yeah, I'm in North Jersey. I don't, okay, North Jersey. Is that, is it like, uh, see, I'm going, uh, this weekend, I'm going to Jersey. Okay, you know where, uh, yeah, yeah you know where, uh, Hard Rock Cafe Casino is? Hard Rock, it's Atlantic City. Atlantic I'm City, yeah. Atlantic City? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah so Atlantic City is on the southern portion of New Jersey. I'm like two hours from there. I'm oh. only like 50 minutes outside of manhattan okay right. okay yeah that's where i'm going this weekend man uh Ooh. yeah man i'm looking forward to it i've been to jersey a few times but i haven't hit the casinos up there <laughs> yeah, you, you taking you taking the wife and the kids or just the wife just the wifey man uh I, it was a late birthday present she wanted to go to a casino again she's addicted to blackjack uh, <laughs> i'm a blackjack player myself so i, I love understand. it man i love it and I'm, <laughs> I, i'll tell you what with her loving it, it, it definitely boosts my love towards her. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so you've been locked up, I'm guessing, in Jersey? Uh, yeah, yeah. I was uh, locked up as a juvenile first in New Jersey and then again as an adult. Um, yeah, I got locked up one time in Florida, but outside of that, it was uh, always New Jersey. Yes. Okay, did you just do like uh, county time, prison time? Well, as a juvenile, I did, uh, I kind of graduated into the juvenile justice system. Basically, I started off in like shelters. I don't know if you're familiar, but you know, a lot of times when kids get in trouble at a young age, they go there first. Like group homes. Uh, group homes and stuff, yeah. And then you end up in the juvenile detention. Uh, I also did a, a program, a drug program that I took, even though I wasn't a drug user, I took in place of 
going to juvenile prison because of juvenile drug charges. Okay. Um, but then, um, as an adult, you know, my legal problems basically started. I had little small things here and there, but at 19, I caught my biggest case, uh, which was basically involving a fight where I was attacked by a bouncer from a nightclub with a baseball bat. And, uh, you know, he followed me out of the club and I had a female visiting me from California at the time and she was in the passenger seat with me. And I didn't even know what was happening, man. I stopped the car because there was somebody behind me, like hiding me, flashing me, trying to get around me. So I just stopped right in the middle of the road. And the guy got out of the car and went to the passenger side and just broke both windows with the bat. Damn. So, yeah, and I had a bat in my car at the time also. Uh, wow. I was working uh, as a diamond dealer, selling diamonds and stuff. So I had that little baseball bat. It was a metal bat I had. So my first reaction was I looked over to the girl and she had like a sleeveless dress on and I just see her covered in blood, including her face. Oh, hell no. All, yeah, all the glass shards just hit her in the face. So I grabbed the bat, I got out and I squared up with the guy and I basically told him like, look, man, I don't even know who you are, you know, but whatever's been done right now, we could fix this damage. Just don't come at me with that bat. And he just charged me with the baseball bat, tried to take my head off. And, you know, he ended up losing the fight badly. Unfortunately for me, you know, I didn't stop when I should have. Uh -huh. I took it. I took it way too far. And the cops, when they ended up showing up, you know, they knew the guy very well because they also, off duty time, worked as security in that same nightclub. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. It, yeah it, it turned into a big thing where I ended up getting charged with first degree robbery, first degree robbery, um, aggravated assault, deadly weapons, serious bodily injury. Um, you know, they, they were telling me for a time that the guy was going to die and he was in a coma. So that was my first big case where I was facing a lot of time. And I ended up bailing out on that one, hiring an attorney. And as, as I'm sure you know, you know, when, when you're just fresh into the system and they're throwing these big numbers at you, you know, you don't really understand the way the whole police system works and that you're not likely going to end up, you know, with those football numbers. Yeah. But I didn't know that. I had not experienced it yet, so I'm convinced I'm going away for a long time now. So even though I'm free on bail, you know, psychologically, I kind of destructed and went downhill fast and ended up just catching a whole bunch of other charges where I was charged now by the attorney general's office in the state uh -huh. rather than local prosecutors. So uh -huh. I ended up with, with, a, with a bunch of conspiracies, organized crime charges. I had... Um, conspiracy hijacking, kidnapping, impersonating law enforcement, a bunch of weapons that they found when they raided my house, um, the assaults that I just mentioned. And I had cases in Bergen County, Hudson County, Passaic County, and Middlesex County. And then it all got waved up to Attorney General's office. So yeah, that was a uh, that was it. That's how I got caught up in the system. It all it all started with this bouncer? It all started with that one fight, man. You know, um, the juvenile time did mess me up a little bit. You know, I'm not going to lie about that because, um, you know, I did hard time in the sense that I was having problems there with the guards. You know, it wasn't with anybody else, but the guards were like, for whatever reason, man, they had it out for me. And like you said about the video you first saw about me, you know, I don't bite my tongue for anyone. And yeah. so I'm vocal yeah. about whatever issue I'm having. And because of that, you know, they ended up just taking it out on me and like we're literally coming in my cell almost every day and just beating me down and trying to get me to like submit and trying to give up and you know I, I never did it and so the result of that though kind of messed me up and so when I came out I was still a young person I was 16 going on 17 years old uh, I had been in and out since 13 but I didn't really know how to adapt back you know I, I didn't really feel as though I fit in anywhere like where do you go after that? Like, I just came out of this jungle. I can't, I can't imagine myself going back to school and, you know, socializing in a regular way. And so I did what I had to do. You know, I survived and I managed to pick things up and get myself a little bit better and find work and be able to make a living. And then that whole one fight, you know, I have a video on my channel. I think it was titled, um, why you should not fight, you know, one fight that ruined my life. And it was that fight that I was telling the story about. Yeah. That's crazy, man. And, you know, I'm not going to dive deeper into it. If people want to hear your story, I'm sure 
It's all over your channel. Like I said, I haven't watched all your videos. This is new to me right now, but uh, that's a crazy story, man. Yeah, and I mean, the, the, the main thing as far as me sharing it, um, you know, it's really not to my benefit to share. And the reason I say that is because, you know, I'm already way past that chapter in my life. Yeah. You know, like yourself, I'm married. I have three little girls. You know, I have a business. I've been in this location here for 10 years now. So me sharing it, you know, doesn't really do me any good. And But the reason that I do is in hopes that I could help some other people you know, avoid making these same mistakes and going down these same paths that I did. Yeah. Um, another important aspect of it, and something actually that I wanted to mention that I heard you talk about, which I have great respect for, is the fact that you speak freely about God. Yeah. You know, and, and and that was really it for me. That was the change. You know, really, my my life changed, and God really saved me from this situation I was in, where as a result of all those charges, I'm facing 143 years. Yeah, you know, I had I had one offer on the table, and that offer was uh, thirty with eighty five percent. Thirty with eighty five. That ain't that ain't a good that ain't a good offer. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, you know, at, at the time, I'm twenty two years old, and I'm thinking that's my life. Yeah. So I was unbelievably saved, you know, and that was something that brought me to you know, your videos as well because I heard you mention that, and I realized that in this day and age, you know, it's not an easy thing to do. It's not, to talk man. about to talk about God, you know, because it's 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 not cool, you know. People, it's it's frowned upon. It is, and it takes a strong, solid person, you know, to stand there and be honest and say what actually happened to them and what they're feeling and what actually occurred. And so, for that, I give you a lot of respect, man. Thank you, man. I salute to you for that. And you know, it it is it is. Uh, I have no shame in my game, man. My beliefs. Some people are absolutely terrified. To even yeah. mention stuff like that on social media for the simple fact that they'll be, I guess the word is uh, ostracized or whatever the case. And yeah. uh, that's not me, man. You know, I have who I have to answer to when I pass away, and that's all there is to it, you know? I agree. I agree. But um, let me see here. So, did you ever go to prison? Yeah, so I ended up spending um, probably a little over a year and a half in county jail. And because I got hit up, I was I was under investigation, and because I got charged with multiple different counties, I was just being bounced around. Yeah. So when I when I first got arrested, um, after the fight thing, while I'm on bail, I got arrested on the New Jersey Turnpike at a rest stop, and what was supposed to happen was there was a truckload of perfume there. It was like almost two million dollars of perfume <laughs> that we were going to take. Uh -huh. So we pulled up. In our own truck, the security's in on it, and they open the gate for us. We're supposed to go in. We back the truck up to the other one, and we have our pallet jack, and we just take all the pallets, and we're gone. Uh, it ended up being a sting operation because Damn. one of the truck drivers was an undercover New Jersey State police officer. And so, yeah, they ambushed me there, and it was crazy. They came with, you know, like SWAT team, multiple task force. They had helicopters. They had dogs. They came in with what looked like a tank. I couldn't believe it. And, you know, they had me on the ground for like an hour because my co-defendant actually got away that night on foot. He got away. So wow. they were pissed. And while they had me on the ground, I actually asked them, like, so what, you know, what is that tank for? And they told me that tank was to take you out in case you tried to take off on us in that tractor trailer. So... <laughs> They got me. Uh, they got me there. That was in Middlesex County, a place I'd never been to before. So I end up in this county jail where I'm not familiar with anyone, and I didn't know that I was going to get all those other charges from those other counties till about a year in. Oh so man, in that, that sucks. County, it's the worst. Yeah, yeah. So I ended up ultimately going down to prison, and uh, I did four years total on this whole thing. But it was actually a blessing that the attorney general picked it up because that's the highest court in the state, I was able to negotiate for myself something that I never would have otherwise. Uh, they were counting on my co-defendant to testify and turn against me. And when that didn't happen- That's usually know, what happens. Yeah, yeah, things changed. And I remember, mm. you know, we were in the county jail together in different units and we arranged to have a meeting. And in that meeting, he slid me a piece of paper. And that piece of paper was giving him full immunity 
telling him that he could walk out that same day if he just signs and agrees to testify against me, and he never did. So wow. I was very blessed. Yeah, and in total, you know, I was able to negotiate not only for myself, but for him as well. He had another kidnapping case that I wasn't involved in. So he ended up with a 9 with 85, and I ended up getting sentenced to a total of 20 multiple convictions, but only basically having to serve a five-year sentence, of which I got paroled and got out earlier. That's good, man. Uh, did yeah. did uh, are you still on probation or anything? If you don't mind me asking, parole? No, I, yeah, I've long been off everything, man. No parole. I'm completely out of the system. Excellent, man. How long have you been off parole? Um, I've been off parole now for a long time, man. Like ten years, probably. Did yeah. it take Did it take a long time for them to release you from parole? Yeah. Uh, not really because I, I'm not I, really I, aware of uh, parole. I've always been on probation, uh, so parole is kind of new to me. I, I don't know how that really goes basically, too much. Basically, if your back number is a, is a five year, or let's say your back number is a ten, and you serve six and a half of that ten, whatever the remaining amount of time yeah, is, yeah. you from that time they deduct you know work credits, jail, uh, good time credits, whatever else. Let's say you got two and a half years left. That's your amount of parole. Okay. So as long, you know, as long as you do that time and don't violate, don't drop dirty urines, you know, you're okay. So I never really had any problem on parole, uh, aside from my first parole officer who was real bad, but I never caught any charges. I never violated. Yeah. See, over here in Virginia, we have this thing where you, they'll put you on probation indefinitely. So that means you could have, uh, wow. or you know, uh, three years left to serve, and. Uh, you know, they could decide to keep you on probation even after the three years you've been out clean, you know what I mean? But typically it don't happen. But it, that's what they put it as is, uh, you know, pretty much endless probation until they seem uh, wow. deem fit for you to come off. It's pretty crazy. That's actually what I was on at one point. Yeah, uh, in, in New Jersey, basically, the, the only time I'm aware of that there is a lifetime supervision is for serious sex offenders yeah. or or somebody who caught a body for murderers who ended up getting paroled out, they usually have lifetime supervision forever. So how was prison, man? Uh, what prison did you go to? Was it Fed, state? Uh, no, state? this was all state. Okay. And uh, I was actually so worried that the feds were gonna come pick me up. I'm surprised they didn't, man. Yeah, all the way, because I ended up with a couple guns also. They got me with modified weapons. They got me with a sawed off shotgun, you know, so I was actually arrested once with a, with, with a loaded weapon another time, not that same time. So I had a bunch of different cases and all the way up until I saw my girl picking me up, you know, after the bus dropped me off at the bus stop out, outside of the prison, I was so worried that they were gonna come get me. Yeah. But it was all, all state time. Uh, I did time in three different prisons. I was in uh, Southern State, I was in Southwoods, and I was in Leesburg. Uh, it's called Bayside, the town is Leesburg. Okay. What what level did they crank you up to? I, I'm not familiar with those prisons. Were they like medium, max, low? Uh, New Jersey doesn't really rank prisons as far as level. It's just basically maximum, medium, minimum. Okay. Um, we only have one real maximum in the state of New Jersey. It's called New Jersey State Prison. People know it as Trenton, Trenton State Prison in the capital. Okay. Uh, so everything below that is medium, medium, minimum. But I was basically in the medium ones. Okay. Uh, in in the county jails, they also separate. You know, I'm sure you know they have max units and min units and more open kind of dorm units. So during that time, I was in max because of my bail. You know, I had a total of two million dollars in bail with special holds on me. So they had me in max during that. But then I just transitioned into the regular prison system. Okay. Now this is a question I ask everyone that says uh, they've been locked up, <laughs> and you might. Some people, it takes them a little time to uh, answer because they've probably seen a bunch of crap. But if you were to name one of the craziest things that you've seen locked up, what would that be? I don't know if you've told that story on your channel or not yet, man, but that's always a question I ask. I've seen a lot of crazy things. Um, some of them are, are, are really kind of disgusting. Like, I don't want to even go into that, but I've seen basically inmates transport unbelievable things on their body internally. If you know what I'm saying, yeah. I've heard of that, I've seen that. 
But one of the craziest things that I saw myself that happened to a friend of mine was, um, I actually did share this video also. This was in county jail. And in the county jail I was in, I was in a maximum security unit. Everybody there was facing big numbers. Everybody there is basically a violent offender going down for time. Um, we were divided, you know, it was the blacks against the Spanish and the very few whites that were in there. I fall into the Spanish. My mother is from Peru. My father's from Syria. Okay. So I speak Arabic, English, and Spanish. Wow. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm with the Spanish guys and, you know, one of the, a, a guy came into the unit was basically new and he came to me and asked me, he's like, listen, you know, I, I need a banger. I need a shank. Is what he asked me, and I said, for what? And he's like, I don't want to say. It has nothing to do with you guys. I just need you to give me something. And I told him, I'm like, look, man, if there's a problem in the unit, like, you got to let me know what's happening. I'm not just giving out weapons like that to anybody. I have to know what's happening. Let me try to help you. You know what I'm saying? And he didn't, he didn't, he didn't want to say anything, so I said no. I said, I'm, I'm sorry, man. I'm not going to give anything like that. So he went to my right-hand man, who was the leader of this Mexican gang in the jail. And he asked him for it. And I don't know if he told him that I said, it was the Hollywood said, it's okay to get it from you or whatever, but that guy messed up and gave it to him without any explanation. Like he should have came and checked first and made sure that it was the right move. He didn't do that. So he gives him this shank. And when they lock in at night, the following morning, it, it was just coincidental that somebody asked me, to get up early and wake up. You know, usually I sleep through breakfast. I don't get up for the early breakfast. So Yeah, so do I. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this guy wanted me to wake up. I'm like, come on, man, we can talk later. He said, no, nah, it's something important. I said, okay, you wake up. I'm on the ground floor of the tier, and the guy I was telling you that got the shank is on the second floor in the corner. So the guy who asked me to talk to him, he and I are standing there, we're drinking coffee, and we're talking about whatever it was he wanted to say. All of a sudden, I look up and I see that guy who asked for the shank come out of his cell. He stumbles out of his cell and he leans against the guardrail, right? And I could see that he's messed up bad, like they were fighting or something. Then his bunkie comes out and they square up and they start fighting, right? So as they're fighting, you know, I don't know that there's anything beyond the fight right now. I'm just looking up and I'm like, all right, they're just fighting, whatever. So then I see that the Spanish guy something's off with him. Like he's about to faint, like he's way off. He can't defend himself. Is that his so, donkey or the guy with the shank? No, the guy who got the shank. Okay, he, okay. He, couldn't, he was all messed up. And so all of a sudden, you know, the guards pushed the button and they ran in. And one of the biggest CEOs in the county ran down that top tier and tackled, you know, my friend, the Spanish guy. And when he hit him, he hit the end of the cell block and blood just splattered everywhere out of his mouth, out of his nose. And then I saw that he was stabbed all over his body. And what happened was he got the, he got the shank from my friend, the Mexican guy. And something happened during the night with his cellmate. His cellmate took the knife from him without him knowing. He took the knife and while the Spanish guy was sleeping, the cellmate jumped off the top bunk and just stabbed him like 16 times all in his midsection and that's the part that i started I, I saw i witnessed when he came out of the cell stumbling out he was already stabbed up the blood just didn't open up yet i don't yeah. know if you know but you know when you have cuts especially like razors they don't open up right away yeah but when they up they just leak everywhere especially and, uh, especially pokes man they kind of seal up on their own and then they yeah. start leaking a little bit unless you twist it or something crazy like that yeah yeah, so you know that that that's what ended up happening, you know, and um, he, he ended up getting stabbed by his own shank from his cellmate, and you know that was just one of the crazy things. There's a lot of crazy things, as as you know, man. You know, over time there's so many things, but for me that that was just messed up because somehow I felt kind of responsible, like I should have taken more initiative to find out what was bothering this guy, what was going on, and possibly it could have been avoided. <clears throat> But a good thing that ended up happening after that, I thought the guy was going to die, but he survived. And because of oh, wow. the incident, yeah, because of the incident that happened, I mean, they opened him up and he had like 60 staples all the way down his, his, his front to close him back up. But we, I was able to help his family and advise them to get his charges dropped and him released because that happened to him. Because basically he's in 
you know, New Jersey Department of Corrections custody, and they were supposed to look out for him. And how did this happen in there? Threatened lawsuits and stuff like that. So he ended up going home a couple of years earlier than he would have. But it still wasn't worth getting stabbed. <laughs> yeah. No doubt about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a crazy story, man. Uh, yeah. I bet that CO was probably like, what the hell is going on here when all that blood came out? You I'm know? sure he didn't like when the blood splatter all over his face either. Yep. I'm sure. I bet the actually, you know what? I bet the only thing that was going through that cop's mind was, I God, I hope none of this blood got in my damn mouth. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> you know, the, right. the COs, they're very, they're always, yep. you know, they're all paranoid about blood, spit, and urine. I mean, of course they should be. But they're, you know, they're very paranoid by that stuff. Well, that's a crazy story, man. Uh, this is another question that I ask people that have been locked up. If you were to give a couple pieces of advice when it pertains to uh, survival in prison, what do you think would be some of your top things to tell someone that might be going to prison for their first time? And I'm sure you've already said this on your channel as well, well but. I mean, the, the main pieces of advice are the obvious ones. You know, Obvious, mind yeah. your own, mind your own business. You know, don't go around looking to pr make friends. You know, you talk to people. If people talk to you, be polite, be respectful. You know, if you bump into somebody, apologize. You know, always have respect. Carry yourself in that way. Don't go in there with the tough guy attitude, thinking that you're going to come in here and dominate, and everyone's going to be afraid of you. It doesn't work that way. Um, don't. You know, when I say don't mind. I mean, mind your own business. It also means don't go looking into other people's cells. You know, a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people aren't aware of that, man, and they get hurt over that. Hey, you know, I, you, I almost did. I made. I told a story. I said, man, I learned quick as hell not to. Look. I went to a, a, a level four prison, which is pretty much like medium high, a little bit, I guess, yeah. in Jersey's aspect. And uh, I didn't know anything about looking into cells. You know, I just started my time there. I was I was 18 years old. And, wow. you know, every cell I went past. <laughs> look, I look like a peeping Tom going past every cell. I couldn't help it. It was just some kind of damn urge. I had to look in their cell. And then one guy came out and checked me. And uh, that was the last damn time I ever looked in someone's cell. So Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's a good piece of advice. Yeah. Also, you know, don't take things on credit. If you don't have the money to pay it back, you know, a lot of people may try to set you up by offering you something when you first arrive, especially, you know, if you know you don't have money coming into your commissary anytime soon, do not take that stuff Yeah. because you're going to end up getting hurt as a result of that. Yeah. Um, definitely be honest about your charges. Be upfront. Don't lie because people will pull paperwork. You know, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of people aren't aware that we have access to paperwork as well on yeah. the inside. You know, there are so many ways with three-way calls through the guards, through whatever we can find out. So basically that's it, man. You know, stay to yourself, keep your head down. If you get tested, which most people will at some point, it's very important that you fight and that you defend yourself. And that's it, you know? And, and it's, it's tough for me to say that because on the one hand, I'm a man of God now and I'm not about that. But when you're in there, you're in a different world. You're in the devil's playground. Yeah. And those rules, you know, those godly ways of acting are not going to save you in there. Uh, yeah. They're not going to work. So you need to make clear to everybody in there that, yeah, I may not be the toughest, but I'm going to fight. Yeah. And I'm going to fight yeah. my hardest. And I'm not going to be an easy target for anybody. So I think that's an important thing. Otherwise, you know, you're just going to make your bid. A nightmare. You know, that's a good topic for a video, man. A lot of people I knew in jail and prison, they wouldn't fight for the simple fact that they would feel as though they would fall in line and get disciplinary action just for fighting, even though it was self-defense. You know what I yep. mean? Uh, some people, would, you know, they wouldn't want to fight, even though it's about to happen. But uh, a lot of people that get in fights, they get treated as though they were the ones that started it as well. They both get the same kind of actions most of the time. You know what I mean? Uh, disciplinary actions. They both go to the hole immediately until they sort it out. And typically, they're released at the same time. Because I got in a fight with someone that, you know, it wasn't even me who started it, you know? But me and him went to the hole together, and we left together. So uh, we didn't go to the same block. But at the same time, we were treated both the same, even though I wasn't the one who started it. And that's it's pretty crazy. I think that's pretty messed up about 
defending yourself in lockup, man. A lot of people, uh, COs, they, they don't look at it like that. I mean, they do in some way, shape, or form. But uh, oh, God, just my experience, my experience has been the same as yours, where they don't care. Yeah. You're in a fight. At the end of the day, you're both going to lock up. That's it. And that's it. That's, That's it, it, man. <laughs> there ain't no if and there ain't no question. I swear to God, he started it. They don't <laughs> listen to none of that shit, man. They just they lock you up. That's all there is to it, and it's crazy, yeah, man. Because for real, they should be getting to the the issue. You know, they should begin to issue, and they should realize, hey, uh, you know, my life was at risk. I had to defend myself, just like they would do in the courtrooms out here. You know, what's the difference? There ain't no damn yeah. difference from being locked up. There is a court process yeah. for the charges you catch. You know, you catch green sheets in New Jersey. It's called court line. Yeah. So I, I went every time I went to lockup. And in one of those, I, I caught some charges because some guard made up a lie about me all over some stupid thing that I was walking an outdoor wreck that I had a hat on. And he told me to take the hat off. Yeah. And I told him, whatever, man, I don't care about this stupid hat. I took it off. He didn't like the way I answered him. And he pushed the button. Right. So they all jumped on me, took me to the hole. He said that I tried to attack him. Now, I had like 40 witnesses that were walking to outdoor rec with me that were willing to testify. I had all the security cameras, everything. And I requested a bunch of this for that court hearing. And those court hearings are a joke, man. No matter what, no matter innocent, guilty, once you catch that charge, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're through. it's sticky. You're through. Yeah. yeah, it's going to stick, and you're going to do some time in the I hole. I tell people that all the time. Look, I it's funny because I had a story similar to that where a uh, guard, it was count time, and I overslept the whistle blowing. Okay, so I had to stand yeah. up when they blow the whistle, and I was oversleep. I just overslept it. So he came up to my bunk and smacked it with the clipboard. Loud as hell, man. Scared the shit out of me. And uh, I said something to him. It was some, you know, I don't know the exact words, but it wasn't threatening in any way. Uh, but it was rude as hell. But at the same time, uh, they said that I threatened them, okay? Threatened to cause harm to them. They locked me up in a hole for about six months, man. And look, I succumbed. I succumbed to it, man. I, I was writing apology letters for something I didn't even do. <laughs> I said, I swear to God, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to get out of there, man. And it was, it was, but yeah, long story short, that apology letter didn't do shit. I sat in there for like a, a little bit longer until they transferred me off to another prison. But, you know, guards can say what they want, man. And that crap will definitely stick. You know, they, they, yep. st they, they, they uh, stick to their own in there. You know what I mean? The COs are Listen, a close knit we, we, family. We with that particular story, it's crazy how it worked out. Cause after I didn't get six months, six months is a long time for threatening someone like that. I did 30 days for it. Yeah. And when I got out, um, I went back to the same unit I came from and that guard actually wanted to talk to me. And he asked the CO that worked regular in that unit, if I could talk to him. And I said, no, I'm not coming out of the unit. I'm not coming out to talk to you. If I talk to you inside the unit, I'm gonna bring one of my people with me also. You know, I don't even know what he wanted to talk about. So he came into the unit and he actually apologized to me, man, which is amazing. Wow. Unheard of. Yeah. The guy apologized to me and he's like, listen, man, I'm sorry. I didn't know who you were. I didn't know. Apparently he got word that I had some serious charges. I had a lot of pull in certain ways and he didn't want any problem with me. He was worried about me trying to get revenge on him now. Yeah. And when he said that to me, I said, man, you know, you just made it so much worse by saying this because what difference does it make who I am? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You should be apologizing, period. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, come on. I was like, you did me dirty. You put me in a hole. You cost me 30 days without talking to my girl, without eating. For what? Yeah. Over nothing because you're, you're on this power trip. But, you know, it was just crazy. I, I never had a guard apologize to me any other time but that. And yeah. it, was, uh, it was crazy. That is crazy, man. You got some stories. Uh I don't want to make this video too long. I kind of just want to introduce you to uh, my audience members and uh, get to know you a little bit better. Hopefully, I get you back on the show here uh, in the future. But, but you got a lot of wisdom, a lot of knowledge, and one thing that I really do like is that you're a family man, okay? And you've got you get, look, you're you're making money, you're doing what's right out there. Uh, that's amazing, man, and that's what. I really, if I were to change anything in anybody's life, is to tell felons that they can amount to something, man. You know what I mean? They have a future, and a lot of people 
think that they do not have a future because of some felonies, you know, and that's not the case, man. And I love see I love seeing other people get successful even after prison, man. That's that's a hell of a comeback, and you know you know it just like I do. Uh, people they go in and out. Once they're in, they're in and out nonstop, and it's hard to break that mode, man. And, uh, it's, it's the revolving door, man, where they just keep going in. And, you know, what you just said to me, I appreciate it greatly. But I feel exactly the same about you. Hey. Man. Seeing, you know, your great success, you were able to make that transition that a lot of people can't. And, you know, also, you're a family man. I have great respect for that. I'm, I'm, I'm a big believer in that, that you step up, you raise your family, you take care of your wife, you be a good husband, good father. So these are things that automatically get respect from me so you're also a wonderful example man thank you man what can and what can be achieved even after going to prison yeah man i hope somebody you know watches this stuff it's like you know i we got a chance i got a chance man this these are true success stories and i love hearing stuff like this man but look uh give people a rundown of your channel and channel name really quick i'm gonna leave it pinned in the comment section below for everyone to go check out show some love and subscribe to this man uh what's your yeah my channel my, my channel name is basically my first name uh it's a b o u d it's pronounced abood so you could just look me up and check me out like that i have almost 400 videos on there um i also in some of the videos you know freely give my contact information for those of you that may need some help in any way if it's something that you think i can possibly assist you with i'm more than happy to try i, I do try to help people on a daily basis and it's my pleasure to so I appreciate you having me on, Josh. It really means a lot, man. Hey, thank you, man. Maybe uh, I'll come uh, jump onto your channel one of these days. Anytime, brother. And listen, <laughs> when you're in Jersey also, man, if you happen to be in my, my area, please feel free to reach out, man. I'll hey, be happy I, might, I, might, I might be in that area. I'll, I'll send you a little email if I am, man. We'll get, get something to eat or something, you know what I mean? Yeah, that sounds good. All right, all right buddy. Brother. I appreciate you coming on, and you take care out there, all right? Likewise. Thank you, man. All right, buddy. You. Thank you, my friend.